Members of the legislature should watch this show tonight because uh, they're going to get a lesson. Welcome in. I am Dan York. This is my state of mind, and it's always an honor and a pleasure to have you. Yeah, the, it, it, let me tell you something. It, please stay through the whole show. And the reason why I say that in advance is that we're going to have a little bit of a conversation that might make you go, what, at the end? But if you pay attention, you'll understand that there are ways that we can operate Rhode Island more efficiently and save some money. My, my anxiety is, is that after reading an op-ed piece from the organization that my guests represent, legislators would have to read this like seven times each to understand what they're trying to say. We'll try, <laughs> we'll try to boil it down in uh, layman's terms, if you know what I mean. Not for you, but you know, even for me. Uh, lots to do tonight. Let us go to the rundown and, wow, right? What else needs to be said? This continuing thing with the governor trying to make this a political election issue, this being 38 Studios, is a continued puzzle to me, but he's always been. Then the consultants that we've paid, man, we got more consultants than Carter's got pills, right? The consultants are actually offering some very, very strange premises for their argument that we should pay that incredible debt to 38 Studios bondholders. And in the meantime, he's back in kind of a very subtle way, and that is true. Now, I feel that way, of course, because the Rangers won last night, and I am a Ranger fan. My Bruins fan director has his Bruins jersey on tonight, and uh, we could end up brawling in the corner before this whole thing is over. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Cap says it might happen. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go. This is a, unfortunately this is a t you know, I in conscience. There's no way that I can start this broadcast tonight without offering at least a thought for you to offer a prayer. I don't necessarily pray on the show, but my God, this is just terrible. In fact, the headline from Turkey uh, that means we are in mourning. And how could they not be? as the death toll is just moving upward and upward toward 300 in this mine disaster. Here's the latest from CBS. The timing could not have been any worse. The mine was packed with more than 700 workers as two teams changed shifts when an explosion in a power distribution unit a mile underground sparked a fire. More than 300 miners have been rescued, some of them critically injured. Others have emerged unscathed, like these men who surfaced to a crowd desperate for good news. But the Turkish government said its hopes of finding more survivors are diminishing, and it expects the death toll to rise. You know, it's a large world out there, and you hear news like this, and you don't pay much attention to it, um, but you have to. I, I don't expect you to do anything. Seriously, say a prayer, and, uh, and watch carefully, because Turkey can be a little combustible. Um, and it seems like they are combusting here right now with a lot of people aggravated at the government. I don't know what kind of real oversight the government had on this mine. We'll have more details as they become available. But first, they got to attack the acute issue, and that is to find everybody who was lost and still with 100-plus unaccounted for. God bless them. All right, let's move on to this particular concept. The link chafee is a continuous puzzle to me. I don't think that's new news for, for you who watch me or listen to me on WPRO weekdays noon to 3. Uh, but his decision to go after Republicans regarding 38 Studios funding and the rhetoric that Republican gubernatorial candidates have been offering is as strange as it comes this month for Link Chafee. Here's the headline in the journal today. Yeah, the debate's roiling, roiling or boiling or whatever, something over, and it's because the governor, in, in one of his uh, political Tourette's moments, decides that he's just going to spit this out and, 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 and out of nowhere, by the way, Alan Fung, the mayor of Cranston, and Ken Block, the uh, newcomer in the Republican Party, former moderate party chairman and private businessman, have nothing to do directly with the decision to fund the debt for 38 studios or not. Instead, he starts to pick on them. Uh, Sean Daly caught up with the governor, and Ken Block reacted to Channel 12. I think any governor, a candidate for governor that doesn't see these two truths is really uh, unfit to serve here. These are... Uh, very, very important for the future of Ryan. Number one, Unfit recouping. to serve. That's a strong Absolutely. statement. Governor. Absolutely. I feel very strongly about this. It's the future of our state. My grandmother taught me that uh, people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And uh, what Governor Chafee is doing is he's absolutely throwing stones. 
And I want to remind the governor that uh, under his watch, the bulk of the money was dispersed to 38 studios, squandered, and ultimately lost. And I'd like to remind the governor that he's not running for re-election. So what in the devil is he doing making these kind of statements? Why? It sounds like campaign rhetoric as opposed to governing rhetoric. You know, shooting the messenger versus debating the message uh, is just irresponsible on the part of the governor. And you know what? Whether it's a Christmas tree or the day of reasoning versus the day of prayer, he always walks into a pile of poo-poo. And you know what? This one's going to come back to haunt him. Because what he's done is created an election time issue for all the constituents. You may not have focused on 38 Studios' debt as a primary issue for the election, but know now that he's highlighted that Republicans say don't pay the debt and Democrats say pay the debt. And with the public a little bit afraid to pay the debt because, you know, they don't trust anybody, he may just have served up a Republican to win the gubernatorial race. We'll see. But dumb. Dumb. Next. So the question is, what if we don't pay, right? So we got all the scare tactics going, and the consultants come into the Finance Committee at the House last night to talk about this. S.J. Associates, this uh, Stephen Johnson and uh, Linda Port, the, the two speakers. Here's a short excerpt from their testimony last night. After we determine the degree of downgrade is, okay, what does that mean in the market? What impact does that have on, on the cost of debt? Future refunding opportunities will be diminished. We'll touch on that in a little more detail later. Um, and we believe that the lower ratings will persist for an extended period of time. Oh, come on. You know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, every year, the General Assembly will have to decide whether or not it's going to uh, invest a $12 million line item to continue to pay that debt. The first time they default will cause a little bit of a furor. Uh, these guys don't even know if it's $35 million in overall long-term cost to us if we don't pay the debt or $350 million. They can't determine because they don't know. And Standard & Poor's and Moody's has decided to play God in this particular case when they actually were the kind of guys, the agencies and entities that helped the bondholders think that it was a good investment at 7% return. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And more rhetoric from these guys that we don't have on tape, but which took place in testimony yesterday, they were suggesting that, you know, Rhode Island has the ability to pay. And because it chooses not to, that's why we're going to suffer. As if it's some kind of, you know, high school chew and screw. You know, you go into the diner and you, and, and, and you run up a bill and then you wait for the, the manager to look the other way and you run out the door. That's not what this is. And it's a whole lot more complicated than that very underwhelmed by this $75,000 investment we made for consultants to take off Link Chafee's watch and tell him that he knows the right time. Next item. This surprised me. Last night, I got an email from one Bob Healy, you know, cool moose Bob Healy, lieutenant gubernatorial uh, candidate Bob Healy. I'll run for the office to eliminate the office. I thought he was all done, but he sent out this fascinating pro-con message and it was more like, you know, I'll paraphrase, it was like this. Um, I really don't want to run, but so many people ask me if I want to run that if you really want me to run, sign a petition and put 3,000 names on it and maybe I'll run. And if I run, I'll run really hard. But, you know, my life's good and I, I really don't want to run. <laughs> I had him on the radio today and I said, are you going to work hard at this? I mean, to, listen. Are you going to are you going to be aggressive at all about this? No. If we get the requisite numbers, I will. And if not, yeah, I'm wasting the voters' time and I'm wasting my time. I, I played the song uh, from Jesus Christ Superstar. You know, I don't know how to love him. Uh, it, it, it gets a little gross. I mean, it's it's not it's a gender neutral concept. I mean, I, I, I enjoy this guy. I'm fascinated by this guy. There's no other candidate in Rhode Island or in the world who would say, "I'm sitting at home. Tell me you want me." that I'd have any respect for. But Healy's put in his time. Let's find out more about what he thinks. Tomorrow night, he's going to be here, and we'll, uh, we'll pick it apart. He's a fascinating guy, no doubt. And by the way, no, he's not going to shave or get a haircut. That's guaranteed. And lastly, dun 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 Some goaltending last night. Rangers win. Hold on. Two to one. Patrice Bergeron is all excited about home ice advantage. We're gonna go home and, uh, and and get a job done. We we have to. I mean, it's uh, it's about uh, using them to our uh, to our advantage. Uh, game seven. That that's why you work for the for the home ice. And uh, 
and you got to go home and, uh, and, and be ready. All right, I screwed up the other night predicting they would win game six easily. Uh, Kev, do you want me to say nothing? Yes. Yes. He said, just shut up, Chubby, and let this whole thing play out. I'm saying nothing. All right. I got some wonky guys, but you need to pay attention because they got the fix for us. Stay with us. Okay, so long story short, State Representative Patricia Morgan uh, suggested to me the other day that I had to read this op-ed piece because she's going to put in a bunch of bills uh, to support the concepts here. I thought they were fascinating. Here was the headline. This is the author who is here but is not on the set, which is strange. Uh, Rhode Island government should improve as in other states. Yes, so Joseph Malachowski put that uh, op-ed piece together, and it's a fascinating read. And by, it, what, what it really does is, uh, well, you know what, I'll have them explain it, because they're smarter than me, and I, I'm, I'm going to follow you. I shall follow you, I shall follow you, and we shall get all the answers on how to improve the sure. operations of the state of Rhode Island. Right, guys? We can try. We can try. Uh, the American so Society for Quality, by, by, by the way, Bob and Tony are here. Uh, what's this society about? It's a uh, volunteer society, professional society, of people from basically industry that have uh, tried to just plain make things better mm. for the companies they work for. Many people are involved in quality, such as Tony, and I come from an operations background. Right, so you're kind of a Six Sigma guy. Absolutely. That's, that's about efficiency. That's Correct. about doing it with, you know, that's about going from A to B versus A to Z. Getting like there as quickly right, as you can, right. as few steps as possible. And you work for some big companies and, you, and still do, right? I'm with or Pentair right now, but I worked uh, over 10 years as Chief of Continuous Improvement for our electric boat at Quonset. And Tony, you do what? I'm an independent quality consultant right now, but uh, I've spent 20 years in the medical device industry working with uh, C.R. Bard, uh, Dayball. Uh, I've also worked with Sealed Air, the medical packaging company. And uh, now I'm an independent consultant working for various companies uh, around the area. To show them how to do it better. Right, to, to, to show them how to do it better. To, sometimes they get, uh, they get in trouble with the regulations and, and, uh, they, uh, or they're, they're not meeting their goals. They want to improve. They don't know how. So they'll call in a consultant to sort of help them with that. All right, so you guys have, have, have done some brainstorming, and, and Patricia Morgan's got some bills. And I'm not going to bog you down with bills and names of bills and that kind of thing. You've got some concepts you want to see employed here in the state of Rhode Island. And, right. I, and I'm guessing you want to bring the private marketplace expertise that you can bring exactly. to the company to government, correct? Exactly. exactly. Fat chance. Good luck. We'll see you later. <laughs> good night. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, right? I mean, you know, d in order to be, in order for government to operate efficiently like a private business, if I had a nickel for every listener that tell me that over the course, I'd be rich, there has to be an openness to it, correct? correct. How are you going to create the attitude? First thing we got to do is make them realize that there's already six federal agencies, 18 states, and somewhere around 45 county and municipal areas that have shown tremendous benefits from doing just this. Really? Uh, I.e.? A school district in Florida that saved $18 million by eliminating the paper they were pushing. The state of Ohio has been doing this probably the longest. This year put out that they are now getting a 40 to 1 return on investment for every dollar they spend on this type of program. Why would the, what, does it take a rocket scientist to figure out that you've got to get rid of paper and save $18 million? Well, it, it, uh, no, it's, it's not just this getting rid of the papers, but it's, do, uh, it's doing things in ways that are more efficient than doing them before. Like uh, we had one example where, uh, we're in the case study that I use in my classes, where uh, they had a very expensive master for f film, and it was safest when it was kept in the, in the vault. But in order to get it approved, to move around, to do the things it had to do, it spent more time outside the vault sitting on someone's desk waiting for approval than it did inside the vault. So why do you need all those approvals? I, I want to hear about some specific examples that Rhode Island can employ, but it seems to me that in the private sector, you incentivize performance, whether it be revenue or whether it be expense uh, cutting, you know, bottom yep. line. Government agencies have a little problem with that because their you know, employees and, and managers are paid on a flat line and they just are, are, you know, they get their 2-3% every year and blah, 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 blah. What's the incentive other than the quality of life of the people that they serve? There's a big part of that that's there. One of the things that one of the bills attempts to do also is to set up a performance excellence program, which is kind of a contest each year 
where these different agencies will be able to come together and see how they did compared to all the other agencies. It's recognition, it's not money, but it's a recognition thing. And the American Society of Quality has something they've been doing for almost 20 years now called the International Team Excellence Awards Competition. It's a worldwide competition that does the same thing. So you think what? The Department of Health and Human Services is going to have fun competing with the Department of Environmental Management? Is that, you know, at it, the end of the day, they get a trophy? We love competition. I mean, just look at your thing with the Rangers and the, uh, uh, and the, and the other group. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's competition see, all over. I see, your world gets it. My world gets it. I'm not sure that world gets it. And to be honest with you, a little patch on their shoulder that says, hey, we're more efficient, doesn't seem to, to, to be the kind of thing we should be laying out. I agree with that, too. But right now, there's also, we have the Office of uh, Management and Budget. Correct. Yeah. And their purpose is setting goals for these different agencies. You can incentivize this through those goals you set by requiring them to make improvements. This is the way you do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. goals, and how about firing people? Well, when we come back, <laughs> we'll talk about that and the specifics that Rhode Island can employ. Stay with us. So I got my guys here from the American Society for Quality in Rhode Island. It's a, prof a professional society. You know, guys that are in professional, so people who are in professional societies uh, generally are the, you know, the best of the best in communities because they put in a little extra effort to make the quality of life better. Here's something Joe Malakowski wrote in an op-ed piece. He's one of the guys that's in this organization. I found this, you know, correct. The reason that the poor service and inefficient use of resources persist in government is simply that it can. If private organizations perform like most government agencies, we quickly take our business elsewhere and they'd be out of business. And I go like this. <laughs> like no blank, Sherlock. Right? So I think you've got to fire some people. See, unfortunately, government um, uh, types don't seem to be incentivized for anything else other than fear. Or can we employ some mechanisms of incentive in government that we do in the private sector? Mm -hmm. Raises, bonuses, yep. commissions, yes? Yes. Is that in your, in your, in your proposals, in, in the bills that are going to be introduced to, to get us more efficient? The bills that have been introduced so far are really more about measuring. Uh, I can't say for sure what they have in mind for how to incentivize it. Right, so you're going to legislate that we ought to pay more attention to the waste? Is that really what this is all, or the inefficiencies? Well, it's the, well, the, the, the whole team competition is the people themselves look at it and say, how can we do this better? And then based on what they come up with, I mean, it, for us to go and impose something on them, that wouldn't make any sense at all. It should come from the team themselves, because right. they know how to do it better. The key is, uh, and you know, we do this in industry all the time, we make things better, and instead of firing people that, you know, are, they're, they're excited because now they can do more with the same number of people and they don't have to hire as many well, more. Listen, I, I don't mean to be, some of this looks like I got an attitude problem with public employees, they're fine. But I'm sure, you, my, my, my point is this, there's a lot of this kind of chatter that goes on and it falls on government deaf ears. And Joe's piece is right, makes sense, or even go, well, yeah, and then you walk away doing nothing about it. I'm sure that when you consult companies, your bottom-up approach is very important. The people mm -hmm. who are on the ground yep. you really also need, need to that support at the top level. Got it. Level. But but the people on the ground who feel suppressed and you know you know I'd say something but I don't want to upset anybody. I want get, the upward cough up the phlegm mm -hmm. that you got to get up in an organization <coughs> helps to clear the deck, right? Right. And, and, and and then the bosses go, you know what, maybe we can do it better. Jimmy, why didn't you tell me that? For 13 years you've been working for me. Well, because, you know, I didn't think I could, right? You go through exactly. that all the yeah. time. That's yep. exactly it. Does your, do your bills <coughs> encourage that kind of discussion from rank and file bureaucrats Absolutely. and employees? Yeah. It's about working with the people that do the job every day. Those are the team members. Letting them come up with some of the ideas that help you to improve things. It's what we did at EB. It allowed us to cut EB's cost by 50% while at the same time cutting the span by uh, 45%. Here's the other thing. When customers know it stinks, it gets better. The DMV is an example, right? So exactly. the DMV, I mean, got, Link Chafee has, uh, has stunk the joint out on X number of things, but at least he had a little idea that he had improved the DMV. And by and large, it has improved. It's not perfect, but it's improved. Because customers couldn't take it anymore. Oh, how many state agencies are out there touch, taste, and feel everybody on a regular basis like the DMV does? Not too many, right? That's right. So, so where's the pressure? <coughs> where's the pressure? 
Again, it's a, like Joe said, it's simply because they can. The, the pressure has got to come down from the top. When you don't get, uh, when you're a manager and you're looking for that 1% or 2% or 3% budget increase next year and you don't get it, you know, that's, that, that, that's where the pressure I'll comes from. I'll give you one more place where the pressure has to come from, yeah. the voters. Yes. People getting behind bills like this and others demanding do you that guys, the government do, be accountable for Do you for guys itself. have a candidate that you think is best to employ these ideas? Uh, not at the moment, but we'll be happy to listen to any one of them that talks I'm about glad it. Glad to talk to any one of them. You had a little, yeah. real little wry grin on your face there, <laughs> as if you was there something. Did you want to spit something out? No. <laughs> but I will tell you this, Dan. He's going to come back. I'm going to get him. I spent always... a year working in Massachusetts with the state there, helping them to institute this. Just like you said, we had Governor DePatrick made a. Uh, the governor's uh, mandate that they use these type of programs. Right, you know what? Uh, there's a lot of things we can learn from Massachusetts. Uh, you'll come back. The website we uh, did we po we posted that uh, we posted that a couple of times where you can learn more about this professional organization and some of their ideas. And we shall follow up, guys. Good work. Um, I hope the legislature understands what you're talking about. We'll Thank be you very right much. Back with your state of mind. This is how you get in touch with the program: voicemail, email. You know, here we are talking about efficiencies, and I'm told that I was over on my segment and I have no time to play my voicemails. I hate it when that happens. At least you could come back to me, Kev. Bruins fan, I hope they win, because the Rangers, we're going to kick. See you tomorrow, 730.